Hi everyone, welcome to the Agoja Arts Studio. I am here live starting a new series because I thought people needed something to take their minds off of all of that out there in the news. And you may be thinking, well, why now? Why start a series on creativity now with everything that's happening in the world? This is actually the perfect time to start something new. And here's why. Right now, we are hearing all these things about the virus and how the world is working and how things are changing and what we are living in our daily lives today is different from it was two weeks ago, a month ago. So what we are experiencing now is a shift in perception of our world. So we thought we knew how things were going and everything seemed normal. And maybe now, you know, we hear this word, the new normal, but this for us is a big shift. And so right now we're looking around and we're thinking about all of these things in our lives. It could be how we move around. How are we going to get groceries? How are we going to do this, that, or the other? Do I go and visit people or not? And so you're starting to think about all of these things in your environment from a different perspective. And this is where creativity starts. It's a shift in perception. So right now, as a global community, we are all going through this shift in perception. And this is the perfect time to become more self-aware. Now, creative people, they do a lot of different things to be creative, but most of the time, they practice, and there are a variety of things that they do, and it may be unconscious, but the most successful people do conscious practice. So part of this series is to help you with that shift in perception and to focus all of those energies into something new and different. And it's also to start the practice to get your mind in a place where you can start thinking about things from a different point of view. Now, it doesn't matter if you are an artist or a scientist or if you are a dog walker or, you know, I don't know, whatever it is that you do. Everybody has to come up with ideas every day to go through their lives. And for us, this can be an unconscious thing or it can be something that we're like, oh, gosh, you know, I really need to figure out how to do. Mm. Right. So. If you learn how to put yourself in that place where ideas can come in naturally, it can be very useful. So that's what I'm going to be doing here with this series. I'm going to help you with some simple exercises that can get you to that point where you have that shift in perception and you can recognize it and understand what it is and also to help you use that shift to allow ideas to come in and to sort through them and think about them in a more self-aware way. So if you don't know me or you haven't seen me in a long time, you're like, well, who is she to tell me about any of this? Well, my background is fairly diverse. Uh, I was a scientist years ago, and so I had to come up with all kinds of ideas there and then slog through the working of them. I was also an educator at the university level for many years, and then I decided to become a fiber artist. And so I have always been teaching those techniques to a variety of age ranges. So I've taught science classes, I've taught art classes, I've taught kids, I've taught adults, all kinds of things like that. And when you are an educator, part of your job is getting the material and finding some way to distill it down in a way that is easy for other people to understand and to apply that knowledge to some other situation. So that is a very creative endeavor and it's difficult. It takes a lot of work to get to the point where you can do that well. And a lot of people tell me that I'm fairly good at that. I'm not the best, but it's something that I can do with ease. Um, I'm also now a full-time artist. So that's a whole different kind of creativity. I make one of a kind art dolls and you can see some of them behind me now. These are things in process. So I have to come up with new works all the time because every artwork that I make is unique. So where does all of this come from? Well, it's something that I have to just get stuff from all over the place. 
And the thing is, if you know me, you know I'm one of those people that just comes up with stuff. It's like, oh, well, you could try this or you should do that or maybe this would be fun. My problem is that I actually have more ideas than I know what to do with. And there are people like that, believe it or not. And so a big issue for me is having all these ideas and then saying, okay, I cannot do all of those. These are the ones I should focus on now. And that's part of the discipline of being a creative person. A lot of people don't learn how to practice what to do with all those ideas. Maybe you have all this stuff coming in from all over, you know, you have kids, you have work, you have pets, and all this information is coming in. And it's like, well, how do you stop and focus on one thing? So we'll be working on that too. So I've had to work with ideas and creativity all my life. So I'm going to use all of those experiences in this series to help you work through some simple exercises to sort of foster that that new feeling of, of being a more creative person. Now, one of the things that a lot of people do when they say, oh, I want to write a novel or I want to learn how to paint or I want to learn how to whatever, they go to classes and the instructor starts out with something simple and people get frustrated and they're like, oh, man, you know, I just want to learn how to paint. And so maybe it's that there's the instructor is starting out with something very, very simple, like drawing circles on a canvas. Those exercises have purpose and we all want to jump in and be an expert right away. But the thing is, you have to start from zero. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be starting with things that are very simple. You may listen to the homework in a few minutes and you're like, well, what the heck is this? This is dumb. I don't want to do this. This is a waste of my time. No, it's not a waste of your time. Everything starts from zero and it starts from simplicity and you build from those simple building blocks into something more complex. So stick with it. I promise it will be helpful. It will be useful and it will be interesting. Okay. So let's think about creativity as part of the human experience. Now we all have experience with kids, young kids, and you see them running around and maybe they're running back and forth and they're singing songs or they're playing with their Legos or they're playing with boxes and they're making up stories. And it's just like this jumble of stuff coming out of them. Kids before the age of five are incredibly creative. You can just give a kid a box of crayons and a piece of paper and they're just like, you know, they just go and they just draw all these pictures and, you know, it's just amazing stuff and they're singing songs. And we tend to dismiss a lot of what they're doing and we're like, oh, that's silly or no, you need to draw that straight or oh, those colors don't go together. But you have to understand what young children are doing. They are getting all of the information that they see, hear, taste, feel, smell, and they are creating a version of the world in their mind. So all of this stuff that we see them doing, the wacky drawings with, you know, who knows what, with, with fudgesicle and crayon and, and dirt, you know, they do all these things, they put it all together. They don't know the rules because really there are no rules for them. All of this is an important exercise in trying to create something new and understand the world. This is a very important part of our development as thinking animals. So we get on, we get older, and then after the age of five, we may not be as artistic, you know, in terms of drawing or painting, something like that. We tend to be more verbal. And the reason for that is at around that age, we have built up enough of a vocabulary and concepts of words and images in our mind that we can actually shift the focus to creativity to language. So if you are an educator, you're somebody that has worked with K through 12 kids, there's this magic age, about 10 to 12, when kids are just wildly amazing in terms of their writing. Creative writing classes for middle school can just be I mean, it's amaz amazing. You read the poems, the short stories, and they're getting stuff from all over the place because hopefully they're in a place where they can read things from all over. 
all different kinds of books and magazines, maybe graphic novels and all this. And then again, it's just like the younger children, they're getting all of these language things, all of these story concepts, and they're putting it together in new ways and they're building a universe inside of their mind. Now, after about 10 to 12, all what we consider to be artistic or creative endeavors just sort of plummet. And there's a variety of reasons for that. We tend to start thinking more internally. And of course, puberty begins, so our focus shifts elsewhere. But one of the things that kids do is they have the ability to get information, knowledge, sensations from everywhere in the world and be able to hold that in their minds at the same time that they're able to narrow it down and build something new. As we get older, as we go through our teen years, we really lose that ability to hold those two things in our mind. Kids do it with ease. And the people that are most creative are the people that still have that ability to hold those sorts of things in their mind with ease. So as an adult, most people find this very difficult to do. So the example that I was thinking about this morning, you know, how can I help people understand what this is? So imagine in one hand, you have a squirming rattlesnake, okay? You're holding that rattlesnake and that snake is trying to reach around and bite you. In the other hand, for whatever reason, you have just given your cat a bath and you are holding your wet, angry, squirming cat. So you have in one hand, the rattlesnake, the other hand, the cat. Now you can do that, but your attention is shifting from one to the other. They're both squirming in different ways. They both require your attention. And to do both is difficult to do it well is difficult. You can do it, but something usually suffers and you're gonna to have to drop one or the other. Now, a creative person has the ability to go to a place where they acknowledge the cat, they acknowledge the rattlesnake, they feel the squirming, they say, okay, they just accept it and you hold them both at the same time. So that's what we're trying to do with these exercises. We're trying to get to that place where we have all of those different kinds of information about our daily life. And then we're trying to get all of that stuff. And then we have, we want to apply it to some new thing. So we're trying to get it, process it, and do that at the same time, but without thinking about it. So you have to recognize what each of those things feels like in your mind, accept them and just go with it. So this is tricky, it's tricky to learn. And so what I'm gonna be doing is helping you with that shift in your personal perception and you're gonna be working from that weird kind of uncomfortable place. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's see, I have I have notes. I always have notes, but I'm always disorganized, as you can see here. Um, one of the things that I have really been thinking about right now is this book by Linda Berry. She's a cartoonist. I'm kind of in love with her stuff now. And if you are of a certain age, you would recognize her comics because she's been active for a long time. This book is really interesting because she is talking about how she came up with a class that she calls the unconscious mind and she teaches how to write comics and cartooning and illustration and stuff like that and she has a whole variety of really interesting exercises that as i'm going to do start from something very simple but also work with how people perceive what they're doing and so what you're going for is kind of this dissonance in activities and you know you may think well you know what does an artist know about teaching anything she's given a lot of a lot of thought to um, how she teaches her class and she has a lot of information about brain science and how we process information about art and verbal skills and all of these sorts of things and it's it's if you're interested in education i highly recommend this book it's just it's a crazy read but it's very interesting. My husband, who is currently a biology professor, he and I were talking a lot about some of the things that she does in her classes to help students retain material. And this is 
a big thing if you're an educator. You want to be able to explain something that so students can understand it, but you also want them to be able to retain it and be able to utilize that information in a new way. And that's a tricky thing to do, to get that student to that place where they can remember and use at the same time. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing here. And I'm just, as I said before, in love with her stuff. And so part of the way that I came up with the idea to do this series is because I've been focusing so much on what she's doing here. So it's already been 15 minutes. If you know me, you know I talk a lot. So. Um, Let's go ahead and start talking about some of the exercises. Now, I've read a lot of books about creativity over the years, and they all have similar themes. And part of it is you're going to be starting simple. So we are going to be starting simple. I know that I have some followers who are interested in my work as a fiber artist. So if you are a fiber person and you want to work through these exercises as a fiber person, that's great. All you're going to need today for your homework is a piece of cloth. It doesn't even have to be this big. It can be anything. And then uh, a needle that you're comfortable using and some thread or yarn or whatever. You're also going to need a writing implement. So it can be a pencil. It can be a pen of some kind, something that you can make marks on your fabric with. If you're going to be joining in as a non-fiber person, all you need is some paper and something to write with, okay? And I guess a timepiece of some sort. I want you to turn off your cell phones, turn off the TV, turn off the music. You can work with other people when you do this, but I don't want you to talk to other people. And kids can do this too. And it's also very interesting to compare and contrast what you come up with compared to what your child would come up with. But here's the big thing. As we go through all these exercises, for the next two weeks, absolutely no criticism, no opinion about your work or someone else's work. I just want you to create something and just that's it. OK, we're not really going to be analyzing. We're not criticizing. We're not going to say, oh, well, that isn't straight or that isn't colorful enough or I didn't do that right. Forget about all of those judgment kind of things. What we're doing is just letting our brain work. We're just going for that free flow. OK. So well, we have our tools. Um, I don't want you to spend more than about 15 minutes on your homework today, okay? So we're gonna be starting from that place where our perceptions shift. Now I know that everybody has done this in some point in your life. And if you're an adult, you probably haven't done this recently. So you're gonna start your homework session with this exercise. I want you to close your eyes, turn, look somewhere else in the room, the first thing that you see, I want you to name that object, whatever it is, and repeat that word out loud for one minute. Now, if you haven't done this in a long time, you may have forgotten what it's like. At some point when you're talking, you know, you're saying this word, something happens in your brain and it just starts to sound weird, okay? So I want you to get to that place where you're saying whatever that word is. So for me, it's tripod. I've got a tripod over there. You just say that word again and again and again and again and again and again out loud until it sounds weird. And then I want you to just dot down on your piece of paper two or three words to describe how you feel. It could be anything. I feel brown. I feel itchy. I feel you know, whatever it is. Write those three th words down, okay? So you are feeling different. Your perception of that word has changed. Now we're gonna go into another exercise. And this is something that I want everybody, even the fiber people to do. So we're gonna be starting all of our exercises with these basic things. I want you to get your writing implement, whatever it is, and your piece of paper. And I want you to draw a spiral. Just, oh gosh, this, there you go just a simple spiral so just whatever hand you write with just start doing this and this is a meditation exercise that some people use linda berry calls it electrocution spirals and i love that so what you're going to do is you're going to make your spiral as fast as you can the lines as quickly as you can the lines cannot touch keep going for about 30 seconds okay then I want you to put your writing implement in your other hand, and I want you to repeat. Do the same thing. Do a spiral for about 30 seconds. It's going to be different. 
it's going to be a little more difficult. Okay, that's fine. That's what we want. We want to do that. You're paying attention, but in a different way. Okay, so then go back to your dominant hand, whatever your first spiral was, right? So I said, draw a spiral, and then you start doing that spiral. I want you to go in the other direction. And different people are going to start in different directions, clockwise, counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. So whatever you started with, go the other way. Do a spiral for 30 seconds, as fast as you can, the line's not touching, okay? Then, back to your non-dominant hand, you're going to do the spiral the opposite of the way that you did the first time you did it with that hand. So now you're done with, you've got four spirals, doesn't matter how big they are, it doesn't matter how they look, if they're shaky, if they're weird, if they deviate from circles, it doesn't matter, okay? I want you to focus on how you feel as you're thinking. Whatever that feeling is, the first three words that pop into your mind, I want you to write them down, okay? So what we're gonna be trying to do is get to that place where we shift our reality, how we feel when we're drawing, when we're seeing. Okay, so from that place, that weird place, you just feel weird. You've said tripod for a minute. Okay, you've said, you've done your spirals for a minute. It's just like, what, what the heck is she having us do? Now I want you to start the homework. If you're a fiber person, I'm gonna have you work a little bit smaller so that you don't take up so much time. I want you to write with your writing implement on your fabric, define some rectangular space about an inch wide or so if you're in a metric country that'd be two to three centimeters and i want you to stitch lines before you begin i want you to have an intention for what your lines look like so for example zebra stripes write that down and start stitching don't worry if the lines start deviating if it looks different don't stop i want you to complete and fill in that entire rectangle that you've delineated then I want you to go on and do another one. So for fiber people, let's not do more than three. Let's just do two or three if you can. If you are a person that's joining in and you're just doing writing exercises, then I want you to do on your piece of paper, draw a rectangle about two inches square. If you're a metric person, that's five to six centimeters square. I want you to do lines I want you to start with a word of intention, how you want those lines to work. So as you do these different squares, you have to finish one before you start another. If you are just a pencil and paper person, just writing implement person, let's shoot for about five or six, okay? If you can do that many in 15 minutes, great. If you can't, it's not a big deal, okay? You're not getting graded on this. I'm not gonna think you're a horrible person if you can't finish. Just do something, okay? So then, once you have your stuff and you're done, I would appreciate it if you would select one or two of your favorite, for whatever reason, your favorite squares of your mark. So we're just doing lines today. It's as simple as that. Just images of your favorite lines and post it onto the Creativity from Almost Nothing group. So we'll see how this goes. And I'm gonna be posting a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of these. I want you to do it before you start next time because we're gonna be building as we go on. So you'll need your completed homework from something um, before to work as we go on um, to the next thing, okay? So I'm sure I've forgotten something. Uh, I will post it in the description in the verbiage underneath. So until tomorrow, get going with those lines. Say tripod 150 times. From humble beginnings like this, great things will occur, I promise. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.